We were talking about your fight with Dominic Cruz that mm. you seemed so emotional, like you wanted mm. to kill that dude. Like you were I did. so. <laughs> yeah, I, d I, d I mean, I definitely wanted to kill him. You know, <laughs> it was so. Ob I mean, it was obvious you were you were head hunting as opposed to like one of the f things that I really enjoyed about well, your first and your second fight with Hen and Burrell, mm -hmm. But your first fight with Hen and Burrell was like here you are fighting for the title mm -hmm. and you look like you're in a sparring session yeah you were just so loose like right away you could throw every there's nothing of tension to what you were doing everything mm -hmm. was like flowing mm -hmm. and i was like look how like well he's responding to the pressure you were having a great time out there yeah exactly not not thinking about it you know and like yeah. you said with the cruise thing i want i wanted to finish him i wanted to go out there and put a point on it and uh you know things you learn from those are those are the small mistakes you you learn from and you, you change them up next time and you uh come out there a little more level-headed and uh you know, play his game. Like, kind of like you were saying, you know, he, he's a point fighter, you know, and if you go out there and let him point fight you, then that's what he's going to do, you know. Um, so you got to be able to react to how he fights and, and change it up a little bit, and that's why each training camp's a little bit different, and uh, you learn those things, you know. When you go and watch a fight after it's over, mm -hmm. do you see openings and you're like, shit? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that's called regret. <laughs> oh, I still have this, but sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, oh, yeah, hundred percent. You'll you'll see it, and yeah, you'll I'll get I'll start sweating because I'm getting mad that I didn't do something correctly. You know, like in the end of the first round, I was watching the fight against Cruz, and I had a double leg locked up so deep, and I just didn't finish it, and that could have changed an entire the entire fight. Just mm -hmm. one takedown to be in the first round. I was all the way deep, hands under his butt perfectly. I just didn't pinch my elbows to finish it, so I went to lift him, and he slid right through my arms. Mm. The one difference I had to make was pinching my elbows in, and you know. A, a, changes it just one of those things in the moment isn't it fascinating how like you have to train perfectly and yeah. then f you you have to just let everything go automatic mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly it that's you just you hit the nail on the head is to train everything perfectly now it comes down to quality reps but then what's a quality rep hitting and not getting hit or getting the takedown not getting taken down things like that right so now it comes to the the point of adapting to the athlete and the scenario and yeah What's correct, again, is making sure you have high success with that technique, whatever that technique may be. So just putting in the, putting in the time of the reps so it comes out fluidly and there's no longer a thought but an instant reaction. Well, and also having the right coaches, too, right, that can give right. you that information and can give you that high-level technique because there's so many people out there that are talented people, but you see their game just doesn't evolve. It just hits this level, and it's sort of like the level that their coaches are capable of taking them to, and then they don't go any further. They and in that coach, you have to believe and trust in that coach to be able mm -hmm. to take you to that level. Some, I mean, someone can be telling you the exact thing you need to do, but if you don't trust and believe that guy, if he doesn't get it, through your head the right ways, then it's not going to make sense. You know, it's, yeah. it's not, you're not going to, you're not going to do it because you don't believe in it. Well, I think it's amazing uh, what's going on right now with MMA, that people who are casual people, like um, perfect example, the other day I was at my daughter's school and uh, one of the dads came up to me and uh, this dude was just a new fan. He'd only been watching MMA for the past year and he was just rapid firing questions at me and he was ob obsessed with it. He's like, I was never into martial arts when I was a kid. Uh, I watched a little bit of boxing and he's like, but man, the UFC has just got me hooked. And he's like, one of the things that I love love about it is how many different ways a fight can end he's like it's just it's so crazy like you'll you'll watch a fight and then all of a sudden the guy's getting choked it's like what happened yeah and and we were going over this uh, about it and this guy was a real smart guy. i think he's like a hedge fund manager or something mm -hmm. like that but he was obsessed with all the possibilities you know and i think casual fans are starting to understand now that this is a very intellectual pursuit if you don't have a strong mind and if you mm -hmm. don't have this full range of options and possibilities inside the octagon you're most likely limiting yourself agreed agreed i see that yeah possibilities are nice way to yeah. change things up and again like we said earlier confuse the brain get them thinking about something else and then you do something else so it's always nice but i think right now we're seeing like um there's a there's a pack right there's like the standard pack of of athletes that are doing things in a certain way and then there's a few that are moving away from the pack mm. and they're expanding the potential of mma i think you're one of those people i appreciate that and uh, i think you for sure are one of those coaches and there's a few guys out there i know you don't like to 
here, but Dominic Cruz is one of them. Yeah. He's also doing it. Mm-hmm. We, we were talking about him today, that like his style is so fucking odd. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, he's technically not sound, actually, but, you know, but he uses it the right ways. He's got awesome timing. Yeah. He's got great cardio. He's got a great chin. Yeah. And then he can get away with the, the bad things he does because he does them for the right way for himself. You know? Yeah, I don't necessarily think you can say it's technically bad True. because he's so fucking successful yeah. and he knows how to do it. I just think it's not standard. Mm-hmm. You know, like he doesn't like we were using Ramon Deckers as an example. He does not throw kicks and punches like Ramon Deckers. Mm-mm. But what he does do is he throws him like Dominic Cruz where he's moving like a pendulum mm-hmm. back and forth and his footwork is so weird and he's overwhelming your mind with possibilities and he doesn't do the same thing twice. He mixes things up so well that he's a tough nut to crack. Indeed. But, yeah, but, he he he's tricky. He is trickier than I expected for sure. But uh, you know, piece of that again game planning is the talks up to the fight to get them emotionally invested yes and then it becomes a bit trickier to find the head right so that's the goal when you were when you were leading up to the fight he was talking so much shit yeah and you could tell that you were getting so upset but that is a big factor in fights right because fights are so emotional because it's one of the only sports in the world where your health is on the line like Mm -hmm. literally like this the option it's not like you might get in a car accident when you're racing cars that that's a possibility But the goal of Mm. MMA is for you to fuck up someone's body. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, The thing thing with him, too, that pisses you off so much is that he'll attack anything and just talk about something that doesn't even make sense just to talk and talk louder and faster and not not give you a chance to talk. It's like uh, high school (laughs) girls just like just (laughs) bickering at each other. I think that's what pisses you off the most, you know, because he's not even actually making a great point. He's just... Making it and making it louder. Being well, annoying. he's very articulate. Yeah, he's a good good analyst because he's of good. that. You know, he does yeah. good at that. Agreed. Yeah. So another when, technique. If you get a chance to fight him again for the title, yeah, I better. Which you're I in line, win. yeah, right? Obviously. Mm-hmm. Well, you lost a very close decision to him, and then you beat Rafael and Sun Tso, mm-hmm. which, in my opinion, was a, we were talking about this today was an excellent example of how far you progressed because mm-hmm. you guys had a really tough fight the first time you fought. It was a yeah. close fight. This fight was not close. You mm-hmm. just ran away from him. Mm-hmm. I mean, ran away with the uh, the fight, rather. Not ran away from him. But ran, I mean, you were just, it was a clear mm-hmm. victory. Mm-hmm. It was like you just were so much more technical. There were so many more options you were presenting to him. And he was basically the same fighter that he was back then. Maybe slightly better, mm-hmm. but you're a way better fighter. I appreciate it, man. We've, we've worked hard. We've worked long hours. We worked really hard. Um, you know, it's crazy how, like you said, the sport works out, how quick things can change. You know, I mean... I could be on an 11-fight win streak right now, and a, a split decision loss to Rafael Sensao, you know, mm-hmm. I thought I won that fight. A very close fight with Dominic Cruz that I felt I won as well. Those two fights go my way. I'm on an 11-fight win streak, still have the belt, you know, known as hopefully one of the greatest pound-for-pound fighters in the world, you know. And well, you still crazy are, how stuff for changes. sure. 